Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson on electrochemical reactions. In this lesson, we're going to join the Mindset Learn team as a teacher about redox and half reactions, and then we're going to summarize everything we need to know at the end. So please make sure that you follow carefully, make notes, and then make sure that your notes match mine at the end of this lesson. In this lesson, we will learn more about these reactions. To understand the redox reaction, it is important that we review the oxidation numbers that we studied in grade 11. The oxidation number is a number assigned to an element in chemical combination which represents the number of electrons lost or gained by an atom of that element in the compound. An oxidation number is a hypothetical number assigned to an individual atom or ion using a set of rules. The oxidation numbers can be positive, negative, or zero. And it is very important to remember that oxidation numbers are always reported for one individual atom or ion and not for groups of atoms or ions. So let's look at the oxidation number rules. Rule number one, the oxidation number for one atom in its elemental form is always zero. This means that a substance has a zero oxidation number if it consists only of one kind of atom. For example, the sulfur-8 molecule has an oxidation number of zero, as will iron, since it only consists of one type of atom. Rule number two, the oxidation number of a monatomic ion is equal to the charge of the monatomic ion. This number is determined by the position of the element in the periodic table. For example, sulfur is in group 16 and therefore it gains 2 electrons to form an ion with an oxidation number of minus 2. The fluorine has an oxidation number of minus 1. Aluminium is in group 3, therefore it loses 3 electrons to form an ion with an oxidation number of 3 plus. Rule number 3. The oxidation number of all group 1 metals equals plus 1 and group 2 metals equals plus 2 when they are part of a compound. This means that lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and caesium will have an oxidation number of plus 1 if it is found in a compound. And the elements like beryllium, magnesium, and calcium that are found in group 2 have an oxidation number of plus 2 when they are part of a compound. Rule number 4. The hydrogen atom has two possible oxidation numbers. That is, plus 1 when bonded to a non-metal and minus 1 when bonded to a metal. Rule number 5. The oxygen atom also has two possible oxidation numbers, namely a pretty uncommon minus 1 in peroxides and the more common minus 2 in all other compounds. The last two rules deal with compound and polyatomic ions. The sum of the oxidation numbers of all atoms or ions in a neutral compound is equal to zero. And finally, the sum of the oxidation numbers of all atoms in a polyatomic ion equals the charge on the polyatomic ion. Also remember that in redox reactions, one substance loses electrons and this is therefore the oxidation half reaction. And another substance gains electrons and this is the reduction half reaction. This transfer of electrons is either a direct transfer or an indirect transfer. A direct transfer of electrons occurs in the same beaker, as Simbolelo will show us now. This beaker contains a solution of copper 2 sulfate. Notice how the copper 2 plus ions give the solution its blue color. But when I add zinc plate to the solution, watch what happens. Wow, look, an orange or red coating forms on the zinc plate. Is that copper metal? Yes. Copper ions change to form copper metal on the zinc plate. Do you notice any other changes? 
It looks like the copper sulfate solution is not as blue as it was before. That's because there are now very few copper ions in the solution, but the copper isn't the only thing that has changed. The zinc plate starts to dissolve too. We can represent the reaction of zinc and copper sulfate by writing a balanced chemical equation. Zn plus CuSO4 gives you Cu plus ZnSO4. Thank you, Simbulelo. We saw that the solid zinc rod is oxidized because it is a strong reducing agent and the blue copper ions are reduced since it is a strong oxidizing agent. That we can deduce from the standard reduction potential table. This complete table is available to you during tests and exams, but take care, you will receive two tables. In our lessons, we will use table 4B. This has the lithium reaction at the top. On the table, we can see that the zinc half reaction is above the copper 2 plus reaction. Therefore, the zinc and copper 2 plus will react spontaneously. Let me explain more. Oxidation half reaction that occurs is zinc solid that reacts to form a zinc 2 plus ions plus 2 electrons. While the reduction half reaction is copper 2 plus ions that gain 2 electrons to form copper solid. The net reaction for this reaction is therefore zinc solid reacts with copper 2 plus ions to form solid copper plus zinc 2 plus ions. This reaction can also take place through indirect electron transfer when the electrons are transferred without the reactants being in the same container. Electron transfer occurs spontaneously from the reducing agent to the oxidizing agent through the external wires in a galvanic cell. Let's look at how we can use the table of standard reduction potentials. The table is called reduction potentials because all the forward reactions on the table are reduction reactions. Something else that we can see is that all the redox reactions are reversible reactions and that the reaction can take place from left to right to be a reduction half reaction or from right to left to be an oxidizing reaction. On the right hand side of table 4b, you see that the reactions are arranged according to their increasing reducing ability. So the strongest reducing agent is at the top of the list and the weakest one is at the bottom. When we compare two reducing agents, one is always a stronger reducing agent and therefore tends to lose electrons more easily than the other. Here are a few things to remember when we use this table. We read an oxidation half reaction from right to left on the table. For example, if we look at the first reaction, the lithium oxidation reaction is Lithium reacts to form a lithium ion plus one electron. Take note that when you have chosen the direction that takes place, it is written with a single arrow. For a reduction half reaction, we read the table from left to right. If we take fluorine that is at the bottom of the table and therefore the weakest reducing agent, the half reaction is fluorine plus two electrons forms two fluorine ions. We read the reaction from left to right. The half reaction table can now be used to balance redox reactions. Let's look at an example. Balance the reaction between a copper nitrate solution that reacts with solid iron to form iron 3 nitrate plus solid copper. The first step is to write all the compounds in their ionic form. Then we have a copper 2 plus ion plus a nitrate ion and an ion atom that forms an ion 3 plus ion plus a nitrate ion plus a copper atom. You may notice that only the copper and the ion undergo changes. The nitrate stays the same on the left and the right hand side of the reaction. The nitrate is called a spectator ion since it is an ion which does not chemically participate in the reaction. It can be ignored during the redox reaction, but is used to balance the ions in the reaction. 
The next step is to use the oxidation numbers to identify which substances are oxidized and reduced. In our reaction on the reactant side, the copper ion has an oxidation number of plus 2 and the iron atom has a zero oxidation number. Another product side, the iron ion has an oxidation number of plus 3 and the copper atom has a zero oxidation number. So we can see that the copper 2 plus ion gains 2 electrons and is reduced to copper atoms. And the iron atom loses 3 electrons and is oxidized to iron 3 plus ions. Now we use the table of standard reduction potentials to write down the oxidation and reduction half reactions. See how many reactions you can identify that involve iron and copper. There are five different reactions in this section of the table, so we need to be careful to pick the correct ones. Remember that the oxidation half reaction is written from right to left and the reduction half reaction is written from left to right. So the oxidation half reaction is iron that forms iron 3 ions and 3 electrons and the reduction half reaction is copper 2 plus plus 2 electrons that forms copper atoms. It helps to keep the arrows below each other so that you can identify the reactants and products easily. During a redox reaction, the number of electrons lost must be equal to the number of electrons gained. So the next step is to balance the number of electrons. In this reaction, we have to multiply the iron half reaction with a factor of 2 and the copper half reaction with a factor of 3 so that there are 6 electrons on the left and right hand side of the reaction. We are almost done. All that is left to do is to add the two half reactions to find the net reaction. The electrons cancel out and we find that the net reaction is 3 copper, 2 plus ions, plus 2 iron atoms react to form 2 iron, 3 plus ions, plus 3 copper atoms. So to summarize the reaction, we can say that the iron is oxidized and is therefore the reducing agent. An agent does something for someone else. The iron reduces the copper. And the copper 2 plus iron is reduced and is therefore the oxidizing agent. There is one more thing that can be deduced from the table. If the reducing agent of a reaction is above the oxidizing agent on table 4B, then the reaction is a spontaneous reaction. The reaction between the solid iron and the copper 2 plus ions is a spontaneous reaction, since the reducing agent is above the oxidizing agent. Remember that we said in the previous lesson that the oxidation and reduction half reaction takes place simultaneously in an electrochemical cell. The reduction half reaction takes place at the cathode and the oxidation takes place at the anode. So let's summarize the oxidation number rules. First of all, the oxidation number for an atom in its elemental form is always zero. So if it's an, as it appears on the periodic table as an element, then the oxidation number is zero. The oxidation, oxidation number of a monoatomic ion is equal to the charge of the monoatomic ion. In other words, if you have an ion, an ion that's, for example, chlorine minus or sodium plus or magnesium two plus, then since they're monoatomic, in other words, they're atoms that are alone, but they're ions, the oxidation number is equal to whatever this charge is. So if it's chlorine chloride ion, it's basically minus one. If it's a sodium ion, it's plus one. Magnesium ion would be two plus. Okay. The oxidation number of all group one metals in a compound is always plus one. And the group two metals is always plus two, but that makes sense because we know the oxidation number of a monoatomic ion is equal to the charge of the monoatomic ion. And when you put that ion in a compound, all we're saying is that the oxidation numbers for group one and group two obey this rule still. 
Hydrogen, however, has two possible oxidation numbers, and it depends on what it's bonded with. If it's bonded with a non-metal, for example, hydrogen chloride, then you will see that it has a plus one oxidation number. Whereas if it's bonded to metal, for example, if we have sodium hydride, then it has a minus one. You will notice that also when it's bonded to non-metal, hydrogen's in front and therefore it's plus one. Whereas, yeah, when it's bonded to a metal, it's at the back of the compound. It's written at the back and therefore it has an oxidation number of minus one. Oxygen atoms also have two possible oxidation numbers. And again, it depends on how they're bonded. If they're in peroxides, Okay, then they have a minus one. That's very seldom happens. But if they're in peroxides, for example, H2O2, then they have an oxidation number of minus one. Whereas if, well, that's hydrogen peroxide, by the way. Um, and if they, in any other compounds, they are minus two. So for example, in water, then they're going to have an oxidation number of minus two. But if they're in hydrogen peroxide or any other peroxides, then they are minus one. Now, grade 12, a lot of this is pretty obvious, um, but there are some that you have to learn, for example, the slot here and the slot here. Now, the next thing, the sum of the oxidation numbers of all the atoms or ions in a neutral compound is always zero. Okay, the sum of the oxidation numbers. So, for example, if we've got NaCl, then this is a plus and chloride is a minus and a plus, time, plus, plus a minus. So, you've got plus one, plus minus one is always going to equal zero. So if it's in a neutral compound, it is always, the sum of this is always going to be zero, which is useful because if, for example, I've got magnesium chloride and I know that, and we know that the whole of that is therefore equal to zero, the oxidation number, because it's a neutral molecule or compound. Then if I know that magnesium has a plus two, then I can work out that the chloride ion is minus one because there are two of them. Okay, so useful to know all these different oxidation number rules. Finally, the sum of the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in a polyatomic ion equal the charge on the polyatomic ion. So for example, we've got NH4 plus, the sum of all the charges on the nitrogen and the hydrogens will have to equal to plus one. Okay. And finally, just a summary of redox. We've done this before lots of times, but let's just make sure oil rig is what you need for your redox. Oxidation is loss of electrons. Reduction is gain. That's where we get oil rig from. And then red cat and anox. Reduction occurs the cathode and at the anode you get oxidation and you need to learn these. So grade 12 in order to be able to work out whether something's been oxidized or reduced you need to look at the oxidation numbers you need to learn your oxidation rules and then go do the assessment in the turnable system and make sure you understand and know which things have been oxidized which have been reduced and which rules apply have a great day